Climate change remains a serious threat to sustainable agriculture. Most of the current farming techniques in sub-Saharan Africa fail to prevent the negative consequences of climate change. The Ilwak projects, which are financed by partners and managed by COHAF WeCard, aim to collect and share information and data to establish a system of informed decision-making for sustainable land management and climate change adaptation. One of the four Ilwak projects deals with sustainable management of soil fertility and water resources in a context of change and climate variability. It is implemented in three countries, Burkina Faso, Côte d'Ivoire and Nigeria. Two key objectives in this project. The first was to look at what is being done or what has been done that farmers use to address and mitigate climate change and variability. The other was to look at the scientific concept of proof with empirical data to look at what the farmers have done or what they are doing and also what we have done in research and bring them together. And that was what led us to interviewing 2,200 farmers in Nigeria, in Burkina Faso and Côte d'Ivoire to look at what they have in their existing farming system. Shanga local government, Kebi state. One of the four states in Nigeria in which the Irwak project takes place. In this area, 80% of the population live mainly from agriculture. The choice of Shanga as one of the project intervention sites is not accidental. We try to look at areas in the sub-region where you have low soil fertility, where you have dry spare, where you have drought, and where yes, you have after the rain, the farmers don't do anything again. So we're actually looking at water constraint environments where the soils are poor and where the farmers actually are living below poverty level. Those were some of the, the conceptual framework that formed the project. First, the project partnered with the Ministry of Agriculture of Nigeria through the Kebi Authority for Rural Development and Agriculture to find an entry point into the farming community. Actually, the role that ADP plays in conjunction with Ilwat Assistant could not be overemphasized. This is because without ADP, Ilwak cannot carry out all its activities successfully. The reason why is that, first of all, Ilwak come with the cochineers, getting the respondents so that will respond to their cochineers. If ADP did not come in, they will not get the respondents so that will get them, answer them their questions to get the right things they want before they come into the existence of the projects. Nearly two years after the start of its field activities, the project has already begun to show tangible results. Dry season crops are increasing, and at Yori's weekly market, the stalls are filled with a variety of produce and the local economy greatly benefits. <laughs> We ensu na se yenshanu, we ensu kuma da gina laka ne gare mu, amma yanzu sai ka fashi kai na sumunti. To kaga duk wannan ci gaba ne. These encouraging results have been achieved through a well thought and executed strategy built on the participatory model. A first step was to meet with local authorities and stakeholders in the value chain to explain the objectives of the project and ensure their involvement. The water we are going to harvest is going to be stored for them. This process has materialized with the establishment of innovation platforms. In the innovation platform, what we did was to bring all the various actors, including local government officials and government officials. We actually came together, had a meeting, where we introduced the projects to them. And what is the objective, or what the objectives were. After this, we also had their views. These were well documented and then structured into a questionnaire. Then after this, we went to two areas that were similar where we administered the questionnaire 
and we also got feedback and we now came back to look at what the farmers have said what we found out on the field and review Responses were collected through structured individual interviews or focus groups. This has enabled the project to work with reliable qualitative and quantitative data provided by the beneficiaries themselves. Thus, checks dams, water pans and tube wells have been identified as the required technologies on the basis of the diagnosis study validated by the innovation platforms. Well, tube well is one of those uh, uh, water conservation uh, structure. It's uh, essentially to explore the groundwater in areas where the potentiality is feasible. Uh, tube well essentially is a very simple technology to drill uh, a hole into the ground in layman language so that we can use a simple pump to bring water from the um, groundwater and then to use it to, for crop production. Tube well is not completely a new technology. We, uh, it's not that we brought tube well technology newly to this community. It's one of those technologies that have been used over the years. But uh, what we have done is to increase the capacity of the farmers to be able to, one, be able to dig the, the tube well by themselves, and secondly also to be able to use it more effectively. The characterization of soil and water resources has been conducted to determine the most appropriate water management techniques. Thanks to the collaboration of NIMET, the Nigerian Meteorology Agency, climate data over a period of 15 years have been collected and analyzed. The construction of check dams and tube wells is accompanied by a distribution of inputs and small agricultural machinery, selected seeds, gloves, machetes, etc., to village chiefs who are responsible for identifying the beneficiaries. Today, in a short time, the project has greatly impacted on agricultural productivity in its intervention sites in Nigeria through the construction of six check dams, four water pans, and 46 tube wells with a capacity ranging from 1,000 to 5,000 cubic meters. This will result in a 20% increase in the use of water for agricultural activities, especially dry season farming. Through this ILWAC project, research institutions in the three partner countries, Côte d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso and Nigeria, have worked closely around common issues pertaining to climate change, efficient management of soil and water resources, and the improvement of the living conditions of farmers. Our scientists have been more empowered by going for several trainings. So it has opened us to, you know, uh, development, especially in the area of human resources. And with our farmers, we have also better contact. On a social level, the project has generated positive points in helping mitigate conflicts between livestock breeders and farmers around water points. The check dam that we have in Kebi State, which is in another local government, apart from the one we are now, right now, basically has been used by um, cattle rearers because uh, we have realized that there's always a conflict between uh, the farmers and those into livestock as regards water. And uh, fortunately, uh, we believe with the deployment of that technology in that area, 
uh, these conflicts can be resolved and uh, there, there will be a, a synergy between the crop, uh, those who are into cropping and those who are into livestock uh, management. Another significant achievement of the project is the empowerment of women. The process is well underway despite a few cultural challenges, as in the northwest of Nigeria, for example. During the diagnosis survey, before the intervention of ILWA project, women and youth were not excluded. They, we, we involve them, we, we, know, we, we, we make sure we interview the women, so, because they are all farming. Now, now one third of the beneficiaries now are women, and the youth are also involved. Beyond its physical achievements, other criteria to assess the success of a project is its ownership by stakeholders and its sustainability perspectives. As far as this Ilwak project is concerned, the seeds that have been sown bought well for abundant and sustainable harvest because in the future. Because we work through the agricultural development project that is in charge of agri in Nigeria, we were able to train their leaders about the concept of this project. So we actually work together with them and we work also through them. And now the policy makers are interested in upscaling. But again, once CORAF withdraw financial support, the state governments and the local governments will take over and begin to give the financial support to the ADP. Now farmers have been formed into association. These people can also ask as pressure group to make sure that the government deliver on its promise. <laughs> Take it now.